So today I want to talk about basic electronic tools and what kind of tools you might need to get started in electronics. These tools may be expensive, some may be inexpensive. It all depends on the quality you choose to get. Tool number one, screwdrivers. Screwdriver is going to be essential to electronic repair because you're going to need these to take things apart, put them back together, and that you want the screwdriver to fit the screw just right or else it's going to strip it or round it out. I would recommend a wide variety of sizes, all the way from very small and fine tip all the way to a very large tip and long screwdriver. These are going to be essential to getting into very deep holes in some enclosures that might require a long screwdriver. Tool number two is going to be wire strippers. You're going to want to get a nice pair of wire strippers or multiple pairs of wire strippers that can cut and strip multiple different size wires. Don't get the cheap wire strippers that you can only cut one size. They tend to work, but they're going to get dull really fast and they're relatively cheap. So you're going to want to get something that can handle four or five different size wires. Don't get some cheap Harbor Freight wire strippers because they're not going to be very sharp and they're not going to last you very long. Tool number three is going to be a soldering station. You're going to want to get a soldering station versus a single soldering iron because a single soldering iron will not allow you to change the temperature and it will most likely not allow you to change the tips very easily. The soldering iron that comes with the soldering station should be able to accept multiple different tips. These tips should be included in the soldering station and are very useful in soldering different components in different size boards. Number four is going to be solder. I won't use a lead free solder, I'll use a lead blend of lead and tin. Typically I use two different roll sizes of 20 and 30 thousandths. I use a solder that has lead in it because it makes the joint flow better and it is a little bit more flexible in the long run and less susceptible to crack. Number five is helping hands. You're going to want a nice pair of helping hands that you can use to hold your components or your wires while you're soldering. This makes it very convenient so you don't burn yourself. It also is very useful when you want to use for heat shrink tubing. Number six is going to be soldering removal tool. I use a manual one and an automatic one. A manual one is a pump plunger that will suck the solder out from the joint along with your solder and iron heating the joint. These tend to be less expensive and are very efficient at removing solder from the joint. The only thing that you have to do with these is clean the solder out of them every once in a while because they do fill up. An automatic desoldering gun is a very nice tool if you have a lot of solder joints to remove. The only downfall to this is they tend to clog up a lot and overheat the joint if you stay on them too long. So you have to have a fine balance of how long you stay on there and how long you pull the vacuum for because you don't want to overheat the joint because you can remove the pad. I would suggest this uh, over a manual one if you don't have a manual one, but it would be nice to have a manual one if you're just doing a couple of removals. Number seven is going to be a multimeter. You're going to want to get yourself a multimeter. It doesn't have to be a fluke or a very expensive multimeter at all. You can go to Harbor Freight or get something on Amazon. For the basic electronic troubleshooter, you can just get something that does continuity, resistance, and voltage, AC and DC. Some actually will come with capacitance, but I tend not to use these for capacitance because you should use another tool for that. Number eight is another piece of equipment, not really a tool, but you should have it in the shop if you're going to be working with electronics and electronic projects, and that is a DC power supply. You can get a small DC power supply for relatively inexpensive. I would suggest something that does a few amps, but you don't have to get something that it has 20 or 30 amps unless you really need that. The higher in current you decide to get, the more expensive it's going to be. So I would start small with your small hobby projects, something under three to five amps. Number nine is going to be component testing. You're going to want to get some component testers that can measure, analyze, and identify the components that you have. These don't have to be expensive. You can get something on eBay or Amazon. Unless you are looking for high precision, these tools will be very useful. It's better than nothing, trust me. Number 10 is going to be leads and jumpers. You're going to need leads and jumpers to connect your project to your power supply or from your multimeter to your power supply or your multimeter to your power supply and your project. These are going to be very useful. You can get these also on Amazon and eBay and sometimes you can get the alligator clips from Harbor Freight for about two or three dollars. I usually get three or four sets of these at a time. They are cheap but they do work in a pinch. Alright so those are my top 10 tools that I would use when getting started in electronics. Don't go and buy the most expensive thing you can find out there unless you have the money to blow because it's really unnecessary. 
it will make your job a little bit easier in the long run and your tool will last longer if you buy more expensive stuff so there's something to consider there as well if you buy some of the real cheap lower end stuff you can have problems with things failing and not working or breaking so you might want to find something in the middle ground to get started i wouldn't go completely absolutely cheap because some of that stuff is really garbage some of the stuff you can repair on your own like weeds and stuff if the ends fall off you can resolder them so it's not a big deal even some of the higher end stuff does fail too but that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next